one beloved, the beloved asked about uh, if we at church, do we rest? Do we work on testimony? Do we work? If you, that's not the question, I'm just giving an example of everything. Um, if it's if we sing choir, if we at church service, if we break bread, if we go on testimony. Now, a lot of the people believe that when we go on testimony, we're working. Uh, when we go to church, do we um, work or don't we? Beloveds, you must just remember this entire thing, the entire concept of what we're busy with is you are a spirit being inside a physical body. So sometimes it's a little bit difficult to go and do something at church to go on testimony, but the testimony thing, I don't fully agree with that because I like to testify those who've fallen by the wayside, those prophesy because the Bible says prophesy to the dead bones. It doesn't say um, the others will come. Beloved, I promise you, if you do this thing correctly, you don't go out on testimony to people that's dead. You just keep your flock going and the love and the light. When the people come to that church and they hear that spiritual teachings and they hear the choir and they see how each one greet each other by hand and how spiritual they are and how blessed everybody is, then um, you will never go out on testimony there. You'll just look after the herd all the time. I promise you that. So, but when you, when you go on testimony, beloveds, um, let's say, for instance, you're not in the body and you are in the kingdom of God. What else would you want to do but collect souls? So when you become the creator, when you ascend into higher levels of consciousness, what else do you want to do? To work physically is work, yes. But to, to go out on testimony or to do choir practice or to sit at church, it can only be work if it's a burden for you. As Brother Reuven said in that letter, I didn't read everything, but I read here and there. If it's a burden, you're under the law. Because then you have to do it. Now, beloveds, there's two ways of looking at it. When somebody tells me I have to, and they have to drag me to go and do it, then I'm under the law. Not literally, but you know what I mean. If somebody has to tell me to do it, or somebody has to threaten me to do it, or somebody has to, that's not how it works. You will never enter the kingdom of God that way because you can't be. What is the kingdom of God? It's peace. Where I am is pure bliss. Where I am is who I am. I'm spirit. It's peace. So there is no thing as work in the kingdom of God. The Old Testament, yes, in the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread. You sweat, and then while you're working, you're learning. You go to church, you go to a church service, and as the sister said, the, the table is prepared for us and we go and eat. But I eat under the law. I have to. And then it's work. And then you're not in the kingdom of God. Why am I not in the kingdom of God? I've been to church seven days a week. Because you're not in heaven. <laughs> you're not in that state of mind. Why do I have to do something? Why do I have to go to church? All the, the things that God expects of you. And he says to you, he says, test me, beproof me, and kijk of ek nie die vensters van die jimmele vir julle sal oopmaak nie. I will open the, the, the windows of heaven for you. So you, you, you will be fruitful in everything you do. And that is something we have to understand, beloved. You're not doing anything for me or for anybody here. You're doing it for your own soul. 
first of all. So there's nothing you can do for me. If I die tonight, what are you going to do? You have to continue. But if you haven't established and you haven't gotten your mind right and you haven't been created into that which is speaking to you, how will you continue? When somebody has to tell you to do something, beloved, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. That's exactly what Bro Brother Reuven said, or beloved Reuven. Because you have to be told to do something. Just leave it, beloveds. You remember when the in, in the banned books of the Bible, when the, he said, I'm going to the Father. And they said, Father, we know, uh, Lord, we know not where you go. So Jesus said to them, um, you, if you want to, you can come with me. You can follow me. And they said, but if you command us, we will follow you. And what did Jesus say? If I command you, you will not be in the kingdom of God. Why, beloveds? Because they haven't seen Jesus. And that is the biggest problem with all of us. We can't see Jesus. We see Nikki, or we see uh, Ruben, or we see uh, Wendell, or Valdek, or Butler, or Hopkins, or whatever. That's what we see. I just want to read something to you, beloveds. Um, from Galatians 4, first of all. My little children of whom I travail in birth until Christ be formed in you. My little children, my little children of whom I travail in birth because I'm battling to get you to where I am. I'm battling to get your minds transformed so that Christ can be formed within you. Because once Christ is formed within you, beloveds, you will start doing things out of your own. You will know that I am not the physical body. I am not the mind. Then you will know that God is within you because nothing in this world will matter to you. That's where it begins. So that's why Philip says to Jesus all the time and the disciples, I'll read some more text. Where they said to him, but where are you going? And who's this father you're going to? And where's this father? And we, and, and, but that's not what he said. He said, my little children of whom I travail in birth. Why? How do, how do, how, how do I travail in birth for you? Because I bring you to life. I have to bring you to life. I have to give you this light. I have to get God manifested within you. You must start seeing this. To now, up to now, it's all just stories you're hearing. And you're learning these stories and you can repeat them. Some better than others. But have you seen God? If you see God, you will die. And when you die, you become alive. And when you become alive, will anything be a work to you? Will you worry about anything in this world? But love it and accept it the way it is. So that's what I'm saying. When Christ is formed in you, when you become the Christ, who is Jesus Christ? Emmanuel. Who is Emmanuel? God with us. So, beloved, get away from your flesh. Get away from your mind. And that which is from God, let that live in and through you. Let that grow within you. Don't focus on the physical things. Don't worry about the physical things. Seek ye first my kingdom and its righteousness. All other things will be given unto you. Do you believe that, beloveds? Do you really believe? That God is now speaking to you. Can you see that? 
or is it still a fantasy? Is it still a, oh, I'm a bit worried about this lot. <laughs> no. Beloveds, what is it? What do you want? You want peace. And the only way you'll have peace is to ascend above mind. Don't talk it. Don't say it. Live it. Experience it. So that's why it says, I travail in birth until Christ, until Christ be formed in you, until this light, which is life, will be formed within you. For you to become the son, for you to become the Messiah. No more hesitation. Become. Because once you become, you won't hesitate, will you? I want to read another text. First, it was until Christ be formed in you. Again, 2 Corinthians 13, 3. Since he seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you it is not weak, but is mighty in you. Christ is mighty in you. Beloveds, what I'm doing tonight, I am bringing Christ closer to us. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Since he seek a proof, why? when do you seek a proof, beloveds? When somebody talks to you and you say, uh -uh, prove it, prove it, prove that you're the son. What does he say in the banned books of the Bible? He says, when they ask me, where, where are we from? Who must we say we are? No, you are the light that was born out of nothing. Why? Because God was formed within me through all these years. And this light was given unto me. From where? From God. Who's your God? You won't understand him now. Because you will want proof. Those who have seen are blessed. But blessed more are those who haven't seen and believed. Because they will become. Because they, they serve God unconditionally. I just know this voice. Maybe it's a former life. Maybe it's this. Maybe it's that. I don't know. But this is what I've been looking for. And then, no, I want proof. While you seek a proof of this Christ speaking in me. Which to you it is not weak, but is mighty in you. For though, for though he was sacrificed through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him. We are weak in him. Christ is formed within me, but I am weak within him. How? Now Jesus is within me, but I'm also in Jesus. How does that work? Jesus is formed within me, but I'm also in Jesus. The body of Christ, beloved, this is the body of Christ. All members, 1 Corinthians 12, you are the members on the body of Christ. Many members, one body. But because the one is the eye and he says, and the other one says, I want to be the eye. Are you not a part of the body? The seed is sown, 1 Corinthians 15, and God giveth it. A body as he willeth. So beloved. I'm taking it a step up. Sorry brother. Uh, beloved Reuben. Your wife must just. Bear with me. I'll get there. <laughs> we uh, we really oh, appreciate fine, it. And, and we know we've been going for a long time. But believe me. Sister. You will understand. And we will never leave you. We'll always hold your hand. And you can ask a million questions and you can slap me as many times you, as you wish. And the, the beloved, uh, he will always be there for you. We will all just be there for you. So please just bear with me. These things will come through. You weren't called for nothing. You weren't called to this calling for nothing. And uh, I know it's difficult. 
don't try and do it all in a day. That they say when you have to eat the elephant, you eat one bite at a time. And that's it. Just that what you can eat. Accept it. And when you don't feel like it now, again, leave it for a while. Don't think anybody's going to say, oh, where is she? She's going to go to hell. It doesn't exist here. Because all I do is to connect you with Father. I connect you not with this God that is our work. With us, there is no, pass up now, you're going to hell. We are in hell. We have to get out of hell. Because this world is hell. With all its pain and suffering. We want to get out of it because we all, to explain it, we all born in darkness. And now we have to ascend into the light. Ons moet uit die duisternis uitkom en nader aan God kom wat licht is. A beter verstaanbaarheid. And there are only a few that can find it. He says the, the path is straight and narrow and few there, there be that enter into that path. He also says, Father, I pray not for the world, only those that thou hast given me. But I pray not only for them, but those who will come to thee through their words. That's how limited this path is, beloveds. It's very limited. Because if it was there for every, now you'll say no, but when we read Ephesians 4, he says there's one God, one Father, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father who is above all, through all, and in you all. In who all? The guy that's sitting in the bush, in the Amazon, eating another, his buddy? Is God in him? No, beloved, God isn't in him. God is light. God is life. God is spirit. He doesn't have that spirit. He doesn't even know he's got a soul. So the Bible is referring to only those, I pray not for the world, only those that thou hast given me. And that's where the people, they just read what they want to read. And they say, no, it's for everybody. Jesus died for the whole world's sin. Yeah, where's the world? Yes, the world. So we have to, the mind, he overcome the world in John 17 and John 16. He overcome the world. And we have to overcome the world. And the only way that we overcome the world is to become spiritual. To see what God is teaching us. But God is spirit. And then he speaks because according to John 1, God is the word. So God uses an instrument to speak through. And then he creates light within the one he's speaking to. Because uh, David says, the Lord speaketh to my Lord. The Lord within you, the light within you speaketh to the light within me. It's like, it's like two engineers talking to each other. And the one studying this one thing and the other one studying another thing. Now they start changing thoughts. Oh, okay, that's how that works. No, that's a good idea that you have. So we can build a new jet or we can build a new this or a split the atom or whatever the case may be. So the Lord, the professor speaks to the professor, but the physical body isn't the professor. The mind, the degree, the paper doesn't make you a professor. Then everybody can be professors. The wisdom within that professor is what makes it a professor. And it's the same with us. God within you, Emmanuel, is God with us. Because if we're talking here, yeah, and God isn't present. What use will it be? Then you're listening to a man speaking to you, a human being. But he says in Matthew 18, 20, I think it is. He says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of thee. Where two and three my name vergader, daar is ek. Where is God now? Where is Jesus now? As hy onder die tafel, as hy achter die computer, as hy... He's within us. My little children of whom I travail in birth until Christ be formed in you. So this light has to be 
created and formed within me. Since he seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you it is not weak, but is mighty in you. For though he was crucified through weakness, how is he crucified through weakness? Let's just say this. Sorry, beloveds, but these are very important things. How is he crucified in weakness? You have the light. You have Jesus Christ. Now, somebody from a dogma comes and say, but you're crazy, man. And they do all these bad things to you. They're crucifying Christ, isn't it? They're putting a thorn crown on your head. Yeah, yes, you say you're the son of God. I am. You said it. So now they make a big spectacle out of you. In other words, they put a thorn crown on your head and they whip you and they stone you and they do all these things to you because this is the whip, beloved. When you talk to people harshly, you whip them or you stone them or you shoot them with darts. You hurt them. You hurt their feelings. That's how you hurt people. So they crucify Jesus in their weakness because what is weakness? There's no light. There's no understanding. It's only the flesh. That's all, isn't it? Yet he liveth by the power of God, for we also are weak in him. Okay, that's where we were last time, eh? But we shall live with him by the power of God. We in him. We in the body of Christ. But Christ the light is also within us. So that's why what I said just now, the, the Lord, this light is within each and every individual that understands it. That's why Jesus says in Luke 8, he gave the parable about the sower. And then his disciples said to him, but we don't understand. What do you speak in parables? What does this, this parable mean? He said, unto you it is given to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God to the others not. So if Jesus was there for everybody, why did he take, he take his disciples one side? Read Luke 8, Matthew 13, Mark 4, beloveds. And you will see the one time he, he took his disciples one side and he explained the, the, the parable to them, not to the others. He said, they, they look, seeing not. They hear, understanding not. You have the eye, you have the ear. They don't. So that's why it's a great privilege to be a part of the body of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. You are the body of Christ, members in particular. And now again, Christ is formed within you. And he said, examine yourselves whether he be in the faith. Prove your own selves, knowing not your own selves, and that Jesus Christ is in you. This light, this life is in you, except he be reprobates. So if you're waiting for a Jesus to come, you're a reprobate. That's not what I say. It sounds mean sometimes. But we just have to come to the reality. Beloveds. So I just want to continue. This is John 14 from the 16th verse. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. And that's why I said the world, those who are carnally minded, not the people outside the church, people, uh, beloveds, even those in whom Adam was formed. So uh, even the spirit of truth, who the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. What is the spirit of truth? The Holy Spirit is the spirit. What is spirit? Light of understanding. So when you receive the spirit of truth, you hear the truth. Now, when you hear the truth, Christ is formed in you. Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you it is not weak, but is also mighty in you. I am creating, Paul says, I'm creating Christ within you. You're looking for Christ within me, but Christ is speaking to me, through me, because God is the word. Beloved John 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word is God. So God speaks through the instrument. He can't speak through the ceiling or through a cupboard or anywhere else. 
God is a word and a word is spoken through a human mouth. But that's why people can't accept God because they see Nikki or they see the, the beloveds. They see the, the fleshly bodies. They can't see God. And that's why when God starts taking over the body, and that's where people think you get arrogant. When you ascend in the spirit, and I can also tell you, you haven't seen me because I'm going to my father or I was sent from my father or me and my father are one. Why don't you recognize my voice? Now you're going to say, no, that's blasphemies. Why? Have you not seen God? Can't you see God speaking to you? Can't you see this light? Can't you see how serious this is? Can't you see that God is Emmanuel, God with us? Not above sun, moon, and stars, not far away from us. God is the word. I am formed within you. I'm forming God within you. God is working through me and he's recreating himself within you. When the one engineer is teaching the student, he's taking all his wisdom and he's placing it inside that student so that that student will gain all his wisdom and he will become an engineer. Hello? When God lives within me, the Lord speaketh to your Lord. God will work through me. He will choose you first. I can't choose you. Jesus says in, in John 17, Father, I pray not for the world, only those that thou hast given me. Nobody comes to the Father but by the Son, but nobody comes to the Son if it wasn't drawn by the Father. I can do nothing but my Father that's in heaven. And he's working through all of us, if we allow it. But it's time that we do, beloveds. Because I tell you again, I will not command you anything. I will rather leave it. Really. I will leave everything. You have so many videos. You have so many texts. This, these Zooms are just actually spoiling you. There's enough information to, for anybody to enter into the kingdom of God. If they start breaking bread. Because you can't just do it by yourself. But that's true. That's a fact. And that's why once you sit where I sit, you will see how you travail in birth to get Christ formed within others. It's very difficult because the flesh is always between us. And I ask you, beloved, get away from it. You're throwing away eternal life. Now I'm talking to the more advanced people. Beloveds, those who are spiritually enlightened, don't throw it away. You don't think of yourself anymore. Because if you're thinking of yourself, you're missing eternal life. Thinking of those others, you start thinking of, about the others that you have to save. And that's how you learn. Do you know that, beloveds? If you want to learn something quickly, teach it to somebody else. How did Jesus get the blind man to see? He took spit and he put it on his eyes. What is spit? Spit is water. So when I drink the water, I understand something. You teach me something and we talk about it all the time. That water goes into the system and it becomes saliva. In other words, when you teach me something and we talk about it and we take it apart and we try and we learn how it works then I understand it better and better and better all the time. And the more we break bread about it, the more, the more we talk about it, the better we understand it. And that in the spirit is saliva. So when I really understand this book and I understand this path and I live it and I become it, not talk about it, I become it, it becomes saliva. Then you can make the blind see. Those who don't understand you can make them see. I'm spitting on your eyes now. That's how you will start seeing, beloveds. And that's the reality of this Bible. It's an amazing book. But I want you to see it. I want you to live in those heavens where these things physically happen. Because, beloved, when you leave your body, this is now physical to you. 
But when you leave your body and your spirit, what is physical? You're still physical because you still have flesh. Because you're going to think exactly the same way as you are now, but you're just outside the body. The body's there, dying or dead or whatever, and you're going to be, now what? Where are you going to go? What am I now? Where am I now? You see? You are still you. And that's why you're preparing. I'm going to my father to prepare, prepare a place for you. In the house of my father, there are many mansions. And I am going to prepare a place for you. And that's what we're doing. Out of the kingdom of God, I will mediate for you. You will mediate for others. The mediator between God and man. God, the spirit, and man, the physical way of understanding. So there is no physical man in our understanding. Man is Adam. Adam is God's image, beloveds. So this Holy Spirit, the world cannot receive it. Who crucified Jesus? The world. Those who are carnally minded, beloveds, they still crucifying Jesus. They will crucify you. They're crucifying me all the time, but there's nothing more to crucify. Because they won't talk to you. Once you understand, they won't talk to you. So they can't see the Holy Spirit. They can't see this truth. They can't understand this truth because they're looking for something else. Now what they tell me, that's what I'll do. So I, there's, there's only one minute left, beloveds. But I want you to understand that this is reality. Your body and the world you see around you is merely an illusion. Because when you leave your body, you walk through a wall. You go to the sun in a split second, not, not even time. There is no time. You can go stand in the sun. You can go through space to look for God up there. You can come back and ask, what, did I, what, what must I do now? Because I didn't enter into the kingdom of God. I want you to be in the kingdom of God now, beloved. Seek ye my kingdom and its righteousness. He says to John, go read John 3, Nicodemus. He says, if you are reborn of water and spirit, you will enter into the kingdom of God. You will enter now. So that's not this. Because flesh and blood, neither this flesh, neither this flesh can enter into the kingdom of God, beloved. But the spirit, when you take God's image, you are in the kingdom of God. So I can't push anybody to do anything, beloveds. It's your will. Don't make it a work because it's not a job. You're above that.